Hey guys, are you like me? Have you been putting off photo editing or post processing? Well, I sort of had a look at Lightroom Classic and this video is going to be a bit of an introduction to the interface and what exactly it is this um, program has to offer. So you get Lightroom Classic and you get Lightroom CC and they're all part of the Creative Cloud, which I'm fortunate enough to have via my work. So I've downloaded and opted for the Lightroom Classic option, which seems to be the more popular option. And the difference between the two is Lightroom Classic is you have to download that onto your actual computer. And I believe with Lightroom CC, it all sits in the cloud. So all editing happens and gets saved up there. So just by way of explanation, I'm using Lightroom Classic for clarity purposes. Now, up until now, I've been using Adobe Bridge primarily as my file or media sorting out uh, option. And I kind of become quite familiar with Adobe Bridge and I really like it. In fact, I have even dabbled to some degree in editing photos from Adobe Bridge. You can't do it in Adobe Bridge. Like I said, you can sort it all out, but then you can right click, open up in Camera Raw and then do some editing there, which is what I've done. I've even gone as far as opening it up in Photoshop, but Photoshop is a video on its own and so is probably Camera Raw. But the reason why I mention Adobe Bridge is Adobe Bridge, in my view, is the intermediary between our media and then the editing software that we choose to use. So that's how I sort of use it. And because I've got access to all these programs, I sort of started with Adobe Bridge. It served me quite well so far. I, I used it as recently as in January when I got back from that South Africa trip, went through all my photos, rated them, tagged them, um, and then it's a lot easier to get to the favorites. And then from the favorites, we can choose now which ones we want to actually send into an editing program, the likes of a camera raw, Photoshop, or in this case, Lightroom Classic. So I hope that sort of explains um, the logic behind Adobe Bridge. Okay, so let me just open up Lightroom Classic here. When you sort of open it up for the first time, this is what you greeted with. Now, if you like me, I've dabbled in Apple Motion, Final Cut Pro, um, Camtasia, uh, Adobe suite of products. They all tend to follow a similar theme or layout. Uh, which I'll just run through quite quickly. Most obvious in the middle is what we're going to call the canvas, and that's where sort of the primary viewing of our photo is going to take place. And then a lot of them are set up in a panel format with menus and sub menus, and those menus can collapse or expand. So this is what Lightroom Classic sort of looks like. And um, I'll run through each panel individually and then give you a final synopsis at the end. So let's just start off with the left pane over here. Um, the very first top tab or menu is the navigator. When you select on a select a picture, it'll appear in here. And the navigator is quite handy to use. I'll just go to any photo. That I've got in here. Let's just choose this one. So the navigator allows us to obviously click on, we can zoom in, and then it brings up this box here which we can drag around, okay, and get a closer look at a particular part of the photograph. So that's why it's called the navigator. Then you've got a couple of settings on top. You can have it fit the screen, go to 100% or even 200% if you want to start having a real closer look if there's any grain or things like that. So the navigator is absolutely 100% handy. Under the navigator, we've got a catalog. 
uh, menu and all the catalog, catalog is it is what photos have been migrated into um, Adobe I'm just going to call it a Lightroom Classic and you can view them here in a tile format as shown at the bottom here you can view them in an individual format as shown there you can do a comparison between a previous photo and an edited one if you want to and there's also I think they call it a um, survey option you can even have a people view if you want the program to start finding faces um, in the catalog so that sort of summarizes the catalog then you get the folder menu down here and I think I like about the folder menu we've all got external hard drives um, then there's a little drop down and in on our external hard drive there would be particular photos I beg your pardon particular folders from you know uh, places we visited or whatever the case may be we can then select that particular photo only and have that folder become available in Lightroom Classic so you don't have to um, migrate the entire external hard drive you could just send you could just select the folders you want to work on I hope that sort of makes sense now with this folder button when you after a few minutes or whatever uh, after you've imported a particular folder that you want to have access to I notice it disappears for a while so don't be sort of alarmed if that happens simply navigate to the file button on top hit import photos and video and it will reappear again and then below that is collections collections is also very very handy you could have a if you do client work for example uh, you could have a main collection called my clients and then in there you could have all your different individual clients and you could um, import photos into those collections specifically so you can very very easily very very quickly get to particular collections particular clients particular trips you've been on particular styles of photography whatever that collection is going to look like and then under that you've got some publish services which um, so should you want to send it to Flickr, Adobe Stock, put it onto a hard drive, whatever the case may be, the, you have that option. Now if you do right click in here, you can um, customize this left panel to what you, if you don't for example use public, publish services, we can untick that, it's going to disappear. Um, there's another option in here which is very handy to know about it's got solo mode all solo mode is when you click on collections only the collection menu or sub menu will come up right if you move from collection to folders right as you can see there they both stay open and if you go to catalog all three is now open what that means is when you go if you want to go to solo mode only one menu item is going to be open at one time which I kind of prefer I like to be quite systematic with the way I work working ping 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 I don't like a lot of windows open and then to finally wrap up the, this left panel there's an import button big import button over here as well and then when you we done with our editing and so forth and so on we have the option of exporting all really quite self-explanatory nothing sort of untoward while I am here if you want some more real estate on the canvas you do have the option to click this little arrow here and that will close the left panel um, and like I said that just gives us more real estate to work on uh, on the canvas so uh, I hope that sort of summarizes very very quickly what the left panel has to offer okay guys so that concludes sort of the left panel I just want to quickly move through the uh, center panel or canvas and on the top here it's got it's pretty much look at it as a library or as they call it here a catalog and then there's some menus on top here text 
uh, which gives us a searchable um, option in there. Uh, there's some attributes. There's another tab that you can look under. Um, they may be have we flagged it in a particular way or rated it in, in a certain way or color coded it in a certain way. We'll go through all of these in subsequent um, um, videos, but I'm just giving an overview now. We also have a metadata option, which is quite handy. So you can search if it was taken with a G9 or the G7 or even an unknown camera, probably the drone or, or iPhone or whatever. So we got the metadata filtering option up there and then you can go none obviously and you can put the filters off. We can search by camera info. That comes up. It's quite comprehensive. Like I said, we got camera searching. We can search by lens, uh, focal length, all that paraphernalia. We can go out of camera, uh, flag that if we flagged certain photos previously, we can search by flag ones. So if you don't want to use Adobe Bridge, you certainly have the option of rating and flagging photos in um, Lightroom as well. So you don't have to use the uh, Adobe Bridge option. I just used it because I wasn't editing photos up until quite recently. So you've got this menu in here with a whole lot of different filter options, which like I said, we will explore in subsequent um, videos. So we can just put the filters off button. Um, and then down at the bottom, I touched on, uh, you've got the various options. Currently it is in the uh, thumbnail view. Then you can view photos um, singularly and scroll through them as you wish. And um, also do a comparison side by side. So if you wanna see what the photo looks like, maybe before, um, or after you've edited it, uh, you can certainly have a look at that. So that sort of concludes um, very, very basically the center panel or also typically known as the canvas. So under the canvas, we've got this film strip type of a menu down at the bottom here or panel rather. And um, this, like the catalog, allows us access to either all photographs. We can get to recent collections we've been looking at. We can get to recent imports that we've been looking at. So it's like a shortcut to um, things that we're currently working on. We may be working on two or three projects or two or three photos. And this just allows us sort of access to any of these recent folders or sources we've been working on. In addition to that, to the right over here, there is some additional filtering options which is once again another shortcut and you can simply um, if you click on the photos yeah I think you can just slide it it's not working now for some reason um, 106 oh, there we go if I click on it maybe it'll work now there we go so you can slide all the way over and view all the photos you want to there is a drop down menu like I showed you can go to a particular collection and it will only show you that photos so like I was saying earlier you have quick access to different collections different imports so um, that makes life a lot easier uh, is there anything else I can tell you about this bottom panel like the left one we have the option of closing it down at the bottom on that little arrow which once again is not working. I don't know if it's because I'm um, recording, but it seems to be grumpy. But anyway, you do have the option of tapping that little button and then it'll close like this one over here. That one works. Um, and this one works. Uh, but for some reason, the bottom one isn't working now. But anyway, that is what the bottom panel sort of entails. Okay, I want to quickly move to the right tab over here, or panel rather. On the very top here, you've got these tabs. I've reduced mine to two, library and develop. You do have the option of adding a map if you like to see where your photos have been taken in a map. You can have a book option added in there, slideshow, print, web, 
whatever you want you can choose I mean print for example and then the print option would come in there so on the library um, tab I'll just quickly run through um, what some of these menu items are they're all sort of quite self-explanatory so there's a quick develop option there's some keywording options which I would encourage you to do it depending on what um, if you're going to be using Adobe Bridge it's a good idea to start using keywords because you can certainly start searching for photos using keywords and then there's a keyword list that you can I've sort of started for example cheetah you can start searching for photos with these things and then there's a metadata um, panel which you can customize to it either being default or whatever as as I start editing photos and start going through these things I'm going to be doing a few videos and then I'll dive a little deeper into what these um, panels and sub panels represent and then we can put comments in there so that's sort of under the library uh, tab on the right panel and then next to that we've got this develop panel this is where the magic happens it's very very important this particular panel this is the most important one as you can see the very very top panel is a histogram and you do we don't have the option I think of switching the histogram off that's the default panel on the top irrelevant of what sub menu we're going into the histogram always stays there so that is a big clue that when we take photographs it's a good idea for us to have our histogram on the screen and get used to using it so under the histogram are the, is this little sub menu over here and this is one that represents all the editing that we can do under basic tone curve color mixer color grading detail blah 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 and then we also got another menu where we can crop our photos which is all quite straightforward and then this is where we're getting into sort of real um, editing type of stuff uh, I think they call this healing and then you know if we used flashes we can get rid of red eye and then there is some masking which we can also look at um, these menus which I ran through earlier you can customize this development panel so if you think you know what I'm never going to use calibration or whatever the case may be you can um, untick it and it'll disappear from the um, menu options over there I've just for the time being um, leaving it all in there and then on the drop down menu as you get into basic this is where you can start doing your editing this photo has already been edited so I'm not going to play around with it too much and on the topic of um, editing photos photos we should really get into the habit of putting or saving our raw photos and then editing a copy because you never know later on down the track we want to get back to or do something else with that photo it's good to have a raw copy so yep I'm not going to do a deep deep dive into any of these in this video because the video is already getting too long for my liking I just thought this would be a show and tell around what it is you can expect and what it is we're going to be looking at a lot deeper as we um, start playing around more and more with this program I'm quite excited because um, I'm going to be sort of teaching myself watching a bit of YouTube videos and then choosing a photo and um, editing it as best I can that sort of concludes the right panel for the time being all right guys that's it I didn't want this video to go on too long that's sort of like a summarized overview of, of the interface in Lightroom classic I kind of skimmed over it quite quickly um, because like I said I want to keep this video short and sharp but I hope that sort of made sense um, as I start putting photos in here and start editing them I'm going to be diving deeper into these different panels and tools that are available and trying to make sense out of them all and hopefully improve my 
images at the same time so guys aperture to zoom as the name implies we're going to be covering everything in its entirety from aperture to zoom in the photography and videography space thank you very very much for watching this video i know it's a bit of a long one but if you've been putting off um editing your photos um because the, you know there's these programs photoshop and and adobe lightroom the interface can be quite intimidating but if you break it down to bite-sized chunks, you don't have to use all the tools in there. A lot of the time, uh, we only need to use a few for what it is we do. Unless you are, you know, big sort of graphic artist or real high tech photographer somewhere, a lot of the time we only need to use a few of these things. So look, if that sort of resonates with you uh, hit the like button subscribe if you want to see some more i'm going to be doing um, editing videos things that are on exposure composition um, focus you know the key attributes that make photography and videography work thanks for tuning in please hit some uh, if you enjoyed the video drop us a comment drop us a like and we will catch up in the next video bye bye